The occurrence of strange and inexplicable events during times of violent civil disorders has frequently been noted. Here is the account of one such event which occurred during the reign of the black and tan terror in Ireland, a thing which shocked and mystified the entire world. It is not surprising that one of the most baffling mysteries in all the annals of the incredible should have come to light in Ireland in the summer of 1920. For it was during that summer that the struggle of the Irish people for their freedom reached its height. On August 16th, the village of Templemore had been raided. The town hall had been burned down. Other buildings had been destroyed and much of the community lay in ruins and desolation. But on August 22nd, word had spread of the amazing thing that was taking place in Thomas Duan's house. And the villagers and the farm dwellers of the vicinity were determined to witness the miracle for themselves. Thomas Dwan himself had been the first to notice the strange manifestation. On Saturday afternoon, August 21st, a small marble image of the virgin and child in his library happened to catch his eye. He called angrily for his young son. Timothy! Timothy Dwan! Where are you now? The idea of splattering raspberry jam on the virgin Mary... Down the left side of the miniature statue ran a thin trickle of red viscous fluid. Thomas Dwan himself went to find a rag. He returned and bent lovingly over the image. Well, now, what's this? Stuff's not jam at all. Why, it's... It's... See, it's preserved. It's, it's blood. The Holy Virgin is bleeding. Yes, out of the hard, cold, lifeless marble whose tiny drops of blood. Thomas Duan glanced slowly around the room. There were other statues there. There were paintings hanging on the walls, and down each one of them, blood was trickling. Don examined them closely. The blood he saw had not been put on them. It was actually seeping out of the objects themselves. And for several weeks thereafter, it continued to seep until at last it stopped as suddenly, as mysteriously as it had begun. Nor is that the whole of the strange story. Not far away from Thomas Duan's house was that of his sister-in-law, one Mrs. Maher. And there, at the very moment that Duan was making his astounding discovery, a 16-year-old boy by the name of James Walsh, who worked for Mrs. Maher, was pointing in amazement to a statue in the living room. But it is blood, ma'am. And it's coming right out of the stone, ma'am. And that's not all, neither. There's something queer going on in me room. I've got an earthen floor there, as you well know. And there's a hollow in it under my bed about the size of a teacup. Well, this morning that hollow was filled up with water, ma'am. I drained it out, and it filled right up again. And I've been draining it all day, and it still keeps filling up. More than a thousand persons took water from the hollow in the floor of James Walsh's room. And more than a million persons passed the statues that were placed in the windows of Thomas Duan's and Mrs. Maher's homes. But not one out of the million has ever offered a satisfactory explanation for the miracle they observed. A miracle incredible but true.